Hello and welcome to What's New in Creative Suite Design Premium CS 5.5. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe Systems, and it's my pleasure to walk you through some of the exciting new features in the new 5.5 release of Creative Suite. So with that, let's start with EPUB production or eBooks. EPUBs or eBooks is a market that is growing by leaps and bounds. Just by the end of 2010, it was predicted that this market had reached just under $1 billion. And by the end of 2015, it's slated to reach $2.8 billion. That's a huge market, and it's the shape of things to come. Luckily, for my designers out there using Creative Suite 5.5, you're at the forefront of this design process because you have the tools built into your Creative Suite that will enable you to create these publications with ease. Let's take a look. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and jump over to page two. And on page two, I have a multi-column layout that again works great for print. However, for an EPUB publication, this may not work so well because of the singular column format. But before we get to that, I noticed there's some text or something down there that I can barely see. So let's go ahead and zoom in on that. We'll just zoom it up to a full size so we can read it. And this is the copyright information. And you know what? I'd love to have that copyright information appear on the last page. So what I'm going to do is just put my cursor in that text, anywhere in that body of text. It doesn't have to be at the beginning or at the end. And then I'm going to go up to my edit menu, and I'm going to use a new command called place and link story. So when I do that, it gives me the standard placement cursor that you're used to when you're bringing in external content. However, in this case, we're using the same content that we already have in the publication. So with that, I'm going to jump to the end where I have a frame over here on the right-hand side. I'm just going to click. And of course, it places that text in the frame. And you're probably saying, how is that different than a copy and paste? Well, it's actually linked to the original. So for example, if I select that and I go up and I choose Edit Original, what that will do is treat it like an embedded graphic or an embedded text. It takes me back to the original text. So if I make any changes to it, let's say we have to update our copyright. I know that never happens to you, but it happens to me all the time. Let's say I need to change that to 2011. Then what will happen is the minute I click out of that, if I go to my Links panel, my links panel will actually tell me that there is an outdated link. So if I bring up my links panel and scroll down, sure enough, there's an outdated link. And I can say, you know what? I can't remember where that is. Take me to it. And by the way, even if I didn't notice it on the links panel, InDesign is always keeping track of any potential problems down here in the status display. So I'm going to go ahead and say, take me to that area. It will jump to. Uh, the last page in this case, page 15, back where I originally put it and saying this is the link that's out of date because remember we changed it to 2011. I can now just simply update the link and as many times as I place that throughout my entire publication, they would now all be up to date. So again, link text to make life easier, whether it's EPUBs or not, any publication where you have content that needs to be linked and updated throughout the publication regularly. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to jump back over to page two. So we will jump over to page two here and zoom back out. And again, on page two, we have this multi-column format. And the multi-column format, great for print, but what happens when I want to send this over to a device that only works with basically single columns? What I can do is I can select this text, and now using the new article panel or articles panel, I can just simply drag this content into the articles panel and it will prompt me to create a new article, which I will call TLC for table of contents. Now at this point, the table of contents is a selectable and inclusive article that's going to be in here. And so for example, I can select the other pieces of this. If we zoom in a little bit more, you'll be able to read that text. So we have a map. We have the Old Town text. I'm just holding down my Shift key, selecting these, and again, dragging them in to the same article layout. And again, it will continue to add on to that. So what I'm doing is basically I'm telling the order of which I want things to be laid out in the EPUB publication on my devices. 
And you can, of course, do CSS and a lot of HTML programming, but this makes it simple for designers to dictate the order of which things will appear in their publications. Also, you'll notice that there's a checkbox, which means things can be chosen to be included for the EPUB or eliminated for the EPUB. So if you didn't want that particular article or particular graphics in your EPUB publication, just uncheck them from the articles thread. They'll still print, but they will not export out for EPUB. So with that, let's go ahead and jump over to another page here. And in this case, same thing, I want to take this Old Town text and I want to drag this in as a new article. And we'll call this Old Town. And now we have our Old Town text ready to go. One of the things that makes life a little bit more challenging in an EPUB publication is dealing with graphics that can be anywhere on the page in InDesign, but of course in an EPUB or ebook, they have to flow with the text. And InDesign has had a long-standing history of allowing you to do anchored objects, but anchored objects wasn't always easy, or at least not as easy as it is now in CS 5.5. So with that, you notice that on this page I have an anchored object, and again, this is the traditional anchored object that we would see with the dashed line letting us know that this object is anchored to this text. And it even gives me an icon of an anchor right above it. But if I click on the logo above, there is no anchor. So that means it's free floating, which is very okay or legitimate to do inside of an InDesign document for print, but that logo could end up anywhere in an EPUB publication, and we want it to stay with the text. So how do I anchor it now in InDesign CS 5.5? Well, it couldn't be easier. All I have to do is grab this little anchor icon or this little box and just drag this over to where I want it anchored with the text. So I'll put it right after the name of that particular um, establishment. And as you notice, as soon as I drag it over and let go, it anchors it, and again, easier. It couldn't be easier in InDesign CS 5.5 than it is by just drag and drop. So whenever you want to anchor an object, just drag the icon, the little blue square, over to the text that you want to anchor it to. So now let's go back to the page that I was working on with the articles. And you'll notice that we have this graphic, which is basically two graphics grouped together. Well, now I want to control the order of the graphic in conjunction with the text that's on the page. And once again, this is a perfect example of when you would want to anchor an object in InDesign CS 5.5. I can just drag the blue box up to the text or the paragraph that I want that image or those images to appear in front of. And just like that, it is now linked together. Wherever that text goes, the graphics will go with it. So now that we have those photographs anchored right before the last paragraph, the next thing I want to talk about is the actual tagging of the articles themselves as they go out to EPUB. In the previous versions of InDesign, whenever you would do your export for EPUB, all of your paragraph tags would have the P tag, which is standard for paragraphs. However, if you wanted to dictate in your publication what was a headline, what was an H1, what was an H2, you would normally have to go in and edit the code or edit the publication manually afterwards. Well, no longer is that the case, and we did it in InDesign CS55 in an intuitive way, along with creating your styles for your paragraphs or your characters. So when I go into my paragraph styles and I double click on my header style, you'll notice that there's one additional element called export tagging. And when I click on export tagging, by default, it will use the automatic tagging. And again, it's just gonna tag everything as a paragraph tag. However, I can now, for the header paragraph style, I can say that that is now an H1. So it will export that out as an H1 for EPUB and HTML. And if I go in and choose another style, I can make that my H2, my H3, so forth and so on. So that way, my paragraphs are not only styled in my print publication, but they're also styled in my EPUB publication as well. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna jump to the next page here. And on this page, we have an image that is fairly large, and depending on the size of the screen for your device, it may be too large or too small. And that, again, the problem with EPUBs is you don't know what size the device is that the person is going to be looking at it on. So in this case, I want that graphic to dynamically size. If it's a small device, I want the graphic to be smaller. But if it's a larger tablet-sized device or horizontal device, I want it to be larger. 
Well, now I can control that in InDesign CS 5.5. If I just click on the image, I can go up to my object menu, and in my object menu, I now have an option for object export options. And when I choose this, as you may have guessed, I have the options for EPUB and HTML. So I can set my own custom rasterization for that particular object. And by default, things go out at a fixed size. But in this case, I can now say relative to the page width, and more importantly, these devices are coming with higher resolutions. So no longer is 72 pixels per inch enough for some of these devices, especially that have a high resolution display or in the case of the uh, iPhone, a retina display. So in this case, I could pump, pump it up to 150, which will look better if the device can handle that resolution. And if not, again, it's gonna be relative to the page width, it's going to scale it down if need be. So just by choosing that one option, I've now made this one graphic scalable based on the size of the device that it's looking at or being looked at on. So now let's take a look at one of the most requested features for working with EPUBs inside of InDesign. In InDesign CS 5.5, we now have the ability to work with video going out to the EPUB format. That's right, officially in EPUB standard 3.0, video is now a supported format. And that means on devices that support video, like the iPad and iPhone and the iBooks app, you can now place those videos in InDesign CS 5.5 and actually have those videos go out to EPUB format. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to page seven here. And on page seven, I have a placed video. It's actually a placed MP4 file, which is of course compatible on many devices. With this video, I can actually go to the media panel. I can play the video pause the video, scrub through the video. Once I find a good spot in the video, I can actually make that spot the poster frame, the actual image that people will see. And with that, we can actually do a controller. We can either have it just autoplay with no controller, or we can do a skin all over, which means that the person will be able to either tap to bring up a controller, including going full screen, or they'll be able to go in if, it was, if this um, publication appeared as an interactive document on a website, just hover over the video and the controller will come up as well. So we have the ability, of course, to show the controller on rollover. So with that, now when we do our export, the video will actually go out to EPUB format. And again, on devices that support video, the video will be there and playable on those devices. So let's take a look at the export menu now in InDesign CS 5.5. So we're gonna do an export. And export for EPUB is first class citizen under the export menu now. We'll just go ahead and click save, replacing the one we already did. And with that in mind, the first thing we'll take a look at is again, another popular requested feature from the previous versions of InDesign. With InDesign CS 5.5, we can now dictate what the cover image is going to be for our devices. For example, when you look at your publication in the iBooks app on the iPad, you want to actually see a thumbnail for your publication, and again, the thumbnail that you chose. So how do we do this? We can rasterize the first page. That works, but it's probably not the best option. My favorite option is actually to go in to Photoshop and design a thumbnail that looks good small. So with that, once I make that thumbnail, I can actually go in here and choose it. And as you can see, that's the thumbnail that I want to use. And when I go ahead and click open, it will now reference that thumbnail so that when I do my export from InDesign, it will actually export the EPUB with the appropriate thumbnail written to the code appropriately. So with that, we also have the ability under the image tab, as we saw before, to change the pixels per inch for higher resolution devices, as well as choosing how our images interact with those devices, whether they're relative to the page and size, or which is the new option, or a fixed size, which is the old option or the old way we used to do things. So with that, now we can go ahead and export out our EPUB and sideload it onto our devices. Let's go ahead and take a look at what, what it actually looks like on an iPad. All right, I know I said iPad, but first let's take a look at how our EPUB looks on a smaller device like the iPhone. I'm in the iBooks app on the iPhone. There is my book, my thumbnail that I created. If I go ahead and tap that, it will go ahead and launch the book. And again, I can just flip through the pages. And again, the layout is exactly as I dictated in InDesign using the articles panel. Again, for a smaller device, this is extremely important because there's just not as much screen real estate. 
I keep going, I can get to the two images side by side. I can get to the larger image, which by the way is now set that it goes larger when the device is rotated horizontally versus vertically. Just have it flip around there. And we can keep looking at the content here, but let's go ahead and look at it on something larger. All right, so now let's see what it looks like on the actual iPad. Now we have the iPad here and I'm back to the table of contents because I actually want to use the hyperlinks to jump to the film festival. So I tap the film festival and, and you might imagine what I'm looking for. That's right, I'm looking for the video. And with the video, I can actually play that video back on the iPad in line, but more importantly, I can go full screen. And when I go full screen, it's not just a vertical experience. I can actually go horizontal as well. So that's just a quick look at working with EPUBs and eBooks out of InDesign CS 5.5. And you can see how important this entire workflow is to the new Creative Suite Design Premium CS 5.5. Thanks again, and let's get back to work.